Volunteers from the Freedom of Russia Legion, who are fighting on the side of Ukraine, are calling on the Russian soldiers to surrender with the possibility of joining the Ukrainian army. Your political advisors, while sitting it out behind the front lines, strongly recommend that you should not surrender, but rather blow yourself up with your own grenade. But hundreds of Russian soldiers who ignore the criminal order, choosing to live rather than die for a new medal or another mansion for Valery Gerasimov. This decision is a healthy alternative to mindless death. We call on all members of the Russian armed forces to voluntarily surrender to the armed forces of Ukraine, as your colleagues did. And for those who have a desire to continue fighting for a proper future for Russia, there is still an option to join the Legion, Freedom of Russia Legion said. The volunteers said they were ready to talk to anyone who wished to turn their weapons against the Kremlin. In addition to encouraging surrender, the Legion extended an invitation to those who might be willing to continue fighting, but for a cause they believe will better Russia's future. The Legion presented the option of defecting and joining their own ranks, describing it as a viable choice for soldiers disillusioned with the Kremlin's military objectives. For those who wish to continue fighting for a normal future for Russia, the iron option remains, join the Legion, the statement added. The Freedom of Russia Legion is composed of Russian nationals who oppose the current Russian leadership and the ongoing war against Ukraine. The group, although operating within the Ukrainian military structure, promotes a vision of a post-war Russia free from the control of Vladimir Putin's government. In a week of fighting in the Kursk region, Russian troops have failed to stop the advance of the Ukrainian armed forces. The Ukrainian army controls 74 settlements in the Kursk region, said the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine Alexander Sworsky. Over the past 24 hours, our troops have advanced in certain directions from 1 to 3 kilometers, 40 square kilometers have been taken under control, he said on August 13, reporting on the situation at the front to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. A video of the report was published on Zelensky's social networks. According to SYRSKY, fighting is still ongoing along the entire front line. The situation, despite the high intensity of fighting, is under control, he added. In turn, Zelensky spoke about, complex, intense battles, in the Kursk region and the replenishment of the exchange fund for Ukraine. The Ukrainian president noted that inspections and stabilization measures are being carried out in the Russian territories controlled by the Ukrainian armed forces and the development of humanitarian solutions continues for them. In addition, he said that Kiev is preparing the next steps. At the same time, Zelensky said that Ukraine is currently paying special attention to the operation in the Kursk region and the protection of border settlements. The more the Russian military presence is destroyed in the border area, the closer peace and real security will be for our state. The Russian state must answer for what it has done. And it is answering, he added. SYSKY said that the Ukrainian armed forces control about 1,000 square kilometers of the Kursk region, and Zelensky suggested that a Ukrainian offensive on Russian territory could be a catastrophic end to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Russia brought war to others, now it is coming home. Ukraine has always wanted only peace, and we will definitely ensure peace, he emphasized. The Ukrainian brigades participating in the operation occupied the city of Sudza, advanced west, went halfway to the city of Ugov to the north, and also organized a large raid to the east in the direction of another regional center, the settlement of Belia. The maximum advance into Russian territory in the northern direction was at least 27 kilometers. The pace of the Ukrainian armed forces advance has slowed, but the command of the Russian armed forces will probably have to transfer additional reserves to the border if it wants to quickly stabilize the situation. The Ukrainian armed forces managed to pull up rear units, including artillery and drone operators, to the territory of the Kursk region. This allowed the Ukrainian army to continue the offensive. The primary goal is to expand the bridgehead, 
secure the supply routes of its group and prevent the establishment of interaction between Russian groups in different directions, as well as the delivery of reserves to them. Thus, Russian forces no longer have the ability to hit the rear of the Ukrainian group in the Kursk region with FPV drones, a weapon that is widely used by the troops.